Chapter 8 Framing of Constitution and its Features Constitution means any systematic collection of rules designed to govern a country's regime is known as Constitution. Importance Constitution is the basic and most important document. The laws of the country are based on the Constitution. The country's constitution and the constitutional laws should be subject to relevant provisions. The constitution is superior to all the laws of the country. Constitution involves periodically changing requirements of the people's aspirations, expectations, interests, as well as the emotions which are high. That's the reason constitution is known as a live and a basic document. Process of Framing the Constitution Before independence, the British government on 25th March 1946 handed the duty to the cabinet mission of three members to find a solution to the questions of India's independence. On the basis of recommendation of the cabinet mission, the Constituent Assembly was constituted and the structure of the Constitution was decided. Constituent Assembly comprised 385 members in which various members from different religions, caste, gender and people from various geographical diversification, political representatives and experts from various sectors were included. Jawaharlal Nehru, Sardar Vallabhai Patel, Maulana Abdul Kalam Azad, Sham Prasad Mukherjee, H.P. Modi, H.V. Kamant, Frank Anthony, Kanayalal Munshi, Krishna Swami Ayer, Baldev Singh, and women representatives Sarojini Naidu, Vijay Lakshmi Pandit, etc., were in the Constituent Assembly. Dr. Rajendra Prasad was the President of the Constituent Assembly. A drafting committee was appointed to draft the Constitution under the chairmanship of Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedkar. The Constitution Assembly met for 166 sessions spread over a period of two years, 11 months and 17 days. Members of the Assembly has discussed threadbare each and every detail of its provisions, keeping in concern the matters of constitution of different countries. In this Constitution, there are 295 articles and 8 appendices after amendments with 395 articles and 9 appendices. The Constitution was framed. On 26th November 1949, the Constitution was unanimously passed in the Constituent Assembly. On 26th January 1950, Constitution of India came into existence and India was declared a republic nation. Thereafter, every year on 26th January, we celebrate Republic Day with national fervor. In the Indian Constitution, we have four lions as national emblem and national slogan Satyamev Jayate, Truth Will Always Win. The Constitution provides for citizenship, rights and duties of the people, directive principles of the state policy, union-state relations, elections and emergency provisions. Thus, the Constitution of India is the most detailed and elaborated national document. What is Preamble? Preamble is the core and important part of Constitution. Indian Constitution begins with Preamble. The words written in the Preamble highlights the soul of the Constitution. Preamble We, the people of India, having solemnly resolved to constitute India into a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic and to secure to all its citizens justice, social, economic and political, liberty of thought, expression, belief, faith and worship, equality of status and of opportunity, and to promote among them all fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual, 
and the unity and integrity of the nation. In our Constituent Assembly, this 26th day of November 1949, do hereby adopt, enact and give to ourselves this Constitution. The preamble remained unchanged till 1976. In 1976, the words socialist, secular, unity and integrity of the nation were added. The preamble verbalized the fundamental objectives of the Constitution, aims, ideas and principles. Therefore, the preamble straightaway gives a clear insight of the rule of welfare. The preamble reflects Constitution Framer's psyche. Importance of Preamble The preamble, as a soul of the Constitution, is also an important necessity. To understand the framing of any law or its interpretation, preamble gives proper guidance. To understand the policy behind the framing of any law, preamble plays an important role. The preamble is a useful tool to avoid the trouble in the interpretation of the Constitution. When any ambiguity or obscure details in law arises, preamble helps in understanding and interpreting the law. Thus, preamble serves as a compass to understand the provisions of constitutional law. Preamble is nation's unity, integrity and is the standard crust of brotherhood among citizens who are having noble sentiments and ideals. Preamble is backed by high ideals and goals. Pillars of the Preamble The words inscribed in the preamble are We, the people of India, sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic, republic, justice, liberty, fraternity and equality. Here we will study the following three main pillars of the preamble. Democracy the ultimate sovereignty of power is with the people, according to Indian constitution. There is no particular regime of any particular person. Instead, it is with the people. Democracy, the word, is derived from Greek word demos, means people, and kratia means power. Country's power is not within a group of people. Instead, it is within the people of the country. Democratic state administration is such an arrangement in which there is equal justice for people to social, economical and political and having equal rights of participation. In democratic India, people elect their leaders through their choice by casting vote to represent those leaders in the parliament and thereafter assuming the post of prime minister and his or her cabinet. Executives do not have absolute power. They are given specific time limit. Similarly, the voters elect state and local level government. Hence, democracy means by the people, for the people and of the people. Cabinet consists members of parliament. Cabinet of ministers is responsible to the parliament. Any citizen of India who possess required constitutional eligibility can contest the election. Ministerial positions are not acquired hereditarily. Each elected government has five years of tenure. This government works under the principles of constitution and therefore it is known as responsible government. The democratic government is based on liberty, equality and feeling of fraternity and continuously work to achieve these goals. The Constitution disseminates the power to people to cast their vote according to their free will and thereby instills confidence in the Constitution. The Constitution of Democratic India renders fundamental rights, principles for political directions, Parliament, Member of Assembly, independent and impartial justice and Election Commission are those provisions which make our country democratic in every means. Adult suffrage means the citizen above 18 years of age 
can cast his or her vote to one's choice of leaders without discriminating caste, creed, religion, language, gender, education, and income or birthplace. But it is essential that the citizens are enlisted in the electoral list. Socialistic. In the year 1976, by 42nd Indian Constitution Amendment, Constitution of India added in the 42nd Amendment, the word socialist. Most of the provisions in the Constitution of India, directly or indirectly, show social revolution, which brought social and economic equality and furthered the aim of welfare state. The principle of socialistic pattern directs social, economic and political equality for citizens as given in the preamble. It is now regarded as a prime feature of the state. It reflects the fact that India is committed to secure social, economic and political justice for all its people. India stands for abolishing all forms of exploitation as well as for securing equitable distribution of income, resources and wealth. Any one particular person should not have power over all assets. Instead, everyone should have equal opportunity by getting facilities and provisions from society and thereby eliminating the discrimination of rich and poor. Therefore, we can say that Constitution of India is a socialistic document. Secularism In the year 1976, by 42nd Indian Constitution Amendment, the word secular was inserted. India is a secular country. India can never become one particular religious country as per the provisions of the Constitution. India does not follow any particular religion. So the country never promotes any religious activity. The country cannot involve any secular activity with religious activity. The citizen of the country has a freedom to choose his or her religion. The country cannot discriminate a citizen on religious basis. Equal job opportunities and political rights to the citizens are given without any religious discrimination. In this way, secularism is the basic foundation and mandatory feature of the constitution. Sarvadharma Samdrishti and Sarvadharma Sambhav are the principles incorporated in the constitution. So no particular religion would be encouraged in any states. There is no prohibition on any citizen to propagate his or her religious belief, trust and faith. Basic Features of the Constitution The Constitution, which came into force on 26th January 1950, is considered as the largest, extensive and detailed written document. Given below is the basic and salient features of it. Written document. Except Britain and Israel, India, along with other nations of the world, have their constitution in written form. Considering the social, geographical, diversified circumstances and prehistorical notions, the Constituent Assembly has kept the drafted constitution in written form. Size of the constitution. Indian Constitution is divided in 22 sections comprising 395 articles and 8 appendices, now 12. The Constitution comprises provisions for state administration and state's interrelations, fundamental rights, principles for political policies, judiciary, election commission, government institutions, minorities, scheduled caste and deprived groups. Therefore, our Constitution of India is the largest, extensive and detailed written document compared to other constitutions. Single citizenship. In America, dual citizenship is given, one for United States of America and another 
for state citizenship. But in India, there is only single citizenship irrespective of any region or state of the country. Only citizens of Jammu Kashmir have dual citizenship, one for India and another for the state of Jammu Kashmir. The center with strong federal structure. India is a union of states. There is nowhere any reference of the word federal in the constitution. Union of states is the sentence used for India. By the use of the word union, a permanent and irreversible relationship between union and its component states is indicated. India is a union of states and no state has the right to secede it. Thus, India is a union of states, yet it has some elements of federal government. In Indian Federation, there are two sets of governments, the union government and the state governments. The constitution has clearly marked areas of functioning for both the kinds of governments. The constitution demarcates the powers of the central and the state governments into different lists of subjects. Union list. Union list comprises 97 subjects. Subjects of national importance like defense, foreign affairs, atomic energy, banking, railway, communication, post and telegraph are included in the union list. State list. The state list comprises of 66 subjects. The state list comprises of those important subjects on which the state legislature house can pass laws. Subjects like law and order, state government institutions, agriculture and irrigation, health, land, interstate trade and commerce are included. If there is a failure of the law and order in the state, the union government, with consent or against the will of the state, can send reserved police force. Concurrent list. In addition to this, the constitution provides for a third list that is called the concurrent list, which consists of subjects of common concern both to the center and the state governments. The central and state government can pass laws on these subjects. The concurrent list has 47 subjects. This list includes subjects like criminal and civil procedure, marriage and divorce, education, economic planning, trade union, etc. Residuary powers. The subjects which are not specifically allotted to union or state are included in residuary powers. Matters that are not included in the division of powers are known as residuary powers. The central government is given the power to legislate on these residuary subjects. The financial distribution of resources is done between union government and state governments. Excise and custom, export-import, income tax, all these major taxes are decided by central government, while sales tax, revenue tax, entertainment tax, educational tax, which are having meager financial resources, are decided by state government. Unified arrangement during crisis. There are three provisions for emergencies in Constitution of India. One, national emergency can be declared at the time of war, external attack or armed rebellion. Two, due to law and order breakdown, the state cannot function according to the constitution, so constitutional emergency is declared. Three, due to increase in prices, there is monetary value erosion. At that, financial emergency is declared. The central government has been given more powers to deal with these emergencies. At the time of emergency, India is almost turned into a unitary system. Parliamentary system. India has a parliamentary system of governance. In a parliamentary system, the parliament is a supreme authority representing people. The legislature at the union 
is the parliament. The parliament is bicameral, means it has two houses, upper house and lower house. Upper house is called Rajya Sabha, lower house is known as Lok Sabha. Though the government is carried on in the name of the president at the union and the governor in the states, actual administration is carried by the council of ministers headed by the prime minister at the union and the chief minister in the states. The council of ministers is responsible to the legislature that comprises representatives of the people. The president selects 12 people who are experts and experienced from various fields for Rajya Sabha. Rajya Sabha is permanent house in which one-third members retire every two years and the same number of members for election. Thus each member has six years of tenure in Rajya Sabha, Council of States. The powers of Rajya Sabha are less compared to the Lok Sabha, which is special, superior and decisive. Rajya Sabha cannot be completely dissolved. Independent and impartial judiciary. The constitution has provided for the establishment of an independent and impartial judiciary. There is Supreme Court at the top, then there are high courts at states and under its jurisdiction are the district courts at district level and at the taluka level there are local and special courts. The judgments of Supreme Court are binding to all the subordinate courts of the nations. In case of conflict between the union and state governments, matters relating to constitution and interpretation of statutes, the final decision is vested with Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is the protector and guardian of the constitution. Amendments in constitution Compared to other countries' constitution, constitution of India is dynamic. Constitution can be amended as and when required. Constitutional provisions can be amended in three ways. Amendments can be made by a simple majority of members present and voting in the parliament. Certain amendments require a special majority, that is, two-third majority of members present and voting. Concerning the union-state relations, the special majority, that is, two-third, and the concurrence not less than 50% of the state legislature is required. If there is any amendment to be made in the interrelations between union, state structure of or in supreme judiciary, then half of the states from the total states have to give consent. Judgment of court can also bring amendment by the parliament. There will be no change in the basic structure of the constitution. Simple majority in parliament can bring change in the amendments of the constitution. That's why the constitution is known as the most inconstant and flexible document. But at certain cases, it is not amendable by simple majority. Without the majority consent of states, it's not amendable. Then too, the mixture of both makes the constitution. Universal Adult Suffrage In India, we have a system of adult suffrage which is flexible. According to that, any citizen who is 18 years of age and above possesses right to vote in the elections of parliament, legislative assemblies or local self-government bodies without any discrimination of education, property and economic standard. Secularism we have discussed earlier about secularism in the preamble. In the constitution, India has been declared as a secular state. People of different religions reside in India. Therefore, the state cannot discriminate any citizen on the basis of religion. No citizen can be given special rights or cannot be deprived with certain rights. The state has to be absolutely impartial and neutral in respect of religion. Only secular state can offer proper or equal treatment towards all citizens. 
Secularism means that the state doesn't interfere in matters of religion or is biased to any specific religion. The state has to be secular and indifferent. Followers of every religion are free to follow and practice their religion of choice. Judicial Review Judicial Review is the chief characteristic of the Constitution. Judicial Review administers the working of union and state within jurisdiction. Without disrespecting the powers of Parliament, the Constitution has made an effort to harmonize the principles of judicial review. Parliamentary amendments, external orders, ordinances and judicial judgment are given for judicial review. If the court finds any indiscrepancy in the external orders, ordinances or judicial judgments, it can be stopped by declaring them unconstitutional. Fundamental Rights and Duties Fundamental rights are conferred to the people of India by the Constitution to live a dignified life. The most valuable capital of our country is in the overall development of nation which further lies in the fundamental duties and rights. Right to constitutional remedies and for the children 6 to 14 years of age, right to educate are also made available. Directive Principles of State Policy Protection of people, security and welfare should be carried out by the states. These principles provide directions for state governances and policy making, so they are called as Directive Principle. Provision for Backward Sections and Tribes To uplift and include backward sections and tribes and deprived class in the mainstream, there are specific provisions in the Constitution. Reserved seats are allocated in legislature and local self-governing bodies election to provide representation. Reservation quota has been provided for admission in educational institutes and government jobs in proportion to their population to provide equal opportunity. Children of backward sections and tribes are given scholarships, basic amenities and wavered fees which come under optimistic policies and shielding policies as per provision in the Constitution.